Today we're going to talk about multiple myeloma. Why is that? Well, it's a, it's a disease that happens uh, more and more as we get older. It, you'll see later on that it tends to peak in the mid-70s. It's, um, it's an interesting disease. I'm going to do, be doing another video on a thing called light chain disease, which is very much associated with myeloma. The other thing is, this is just an interesting disease in terms of understanding um, biology. Um, <clears throat> as you see here, it looks like this um, skull has been shot with a shotgun. There are just a bunch of holes in it. Um, that's the classic appearance that you'll see um, in an older individual who has developed multiple myeloma. So we're going to talk about that um, in just a minute. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D-B-R-E-W-E-R. -E -E I'm a preventive medicine doc. Started off in ER, got very frustrated with the waste that happens with human beings, uh, and went into prevention. Went to Johns Hopkins, ended up running the program there, and have been in Mostly a role of uh, medical director for large companies, uh, as large as uh, 500 clinics across the country, teaching primary care docs how to do prevention. So <clears throat> as an intern, I remember seeing my first, uh, dealing with my first case of multiple myeloma. It was an individual about 80 years old, and this is what they had, that shotgun appearance on the uh, skull. Now... <clears throat> That's what it looks like when you get a microscope and you go inside. These are clones or cell lines of B cells or plasma cells, uh, cells that make antibodies. Remember that because we'll talk about that later on with light chain disease, which is a rare cause of kidney failure. As I mentioned, let's look at the ages just a minute. Um, <clears throat> 64, 65, as you see, peaking around the uh, mid-70s. So this is a uh, disease that happens with older individuals. And <clears throat> as you begin to think about the actual biological mechanism, it becomes uh, clear why that might be the case. Well, let's talk about that biological mechanism just a minute. Um, it's a classic... Uh, discussion of a cancer, or concept around cancer. Cancers are basically normal cells which have to replicate a lot. But when they replicate, sometimes the control mechanisms for stopping that rec uh, replication goes haywire. And then the cells just keep going, that, these cell lines will just keep replicating and replicating and replicating. So, <clears throat> just a brief, um, and that's what happens here and a brief uh, summary of the progression from stem cells to a pro-B cell, pre-B cell, um, immature B cell, mature B cell, uh, activated B cell, and a plasma cell. See, all these levels and above are making complete uh, antibodies. This is a human antibody. And as you see, this is... Um, sitting out with the antibody on the uh, cell uh, wall. And what will happen is when the antigen, we have a variety of these which are developed somewhat at random, and these cells float around in the periphery, that's what that means in the bloodstream, or uh, plasma, and interstitial fluid, and wait for ex exposure and stimulation by an antigen. When an antigen comes in and hits this antibody, it stimulates this, um, these uh, immature B cells, or, or mature B cells, to form a plasma cell, which will begin to replicate and form, uh, or these will replicate, form colonies of these, which develop a lot of that antibody. That antibody then goes in and uh, attaches to the specific antigen, whether it's a uh, flu uh, vaccine, or the flu itself, um, or the strep, or some other infection. So let's go back, let's go down to this line and look at something just a second. This is uh, out in the bone marrow. This is in the periphery, like in, um, 
nodes. You tend to see these in nodes. When you field nodes, those are uh, collections or pockets of these kind of uh, material B cells. The bone marrow has these, um, this level, the very immature pre B cells. The bone marrow also has the plasma cells. So again, those two areas have the bone marrow. When you get a um, loss of control and a bunch of uh, cloned cell lines, they can begin to eat up the bone. And that is what leads to this shotgun appearance. Each of these little areas is an area where you've got those cell lines um, happening and growing. Now this gets a little, speaking of antibody uh, antigen response, this gets a little bit deeper in terms of the uh, microbiology. Again, this is um, a video for the some of the biology geeks out there. Uh, this is taken from a uh, series about um, antibody development uh, for an antibody use with uh, treatment for the flu. Take, they take B cells, uh, they take blood, draw blood, take the B cells out, start fitting specific antigen antibody uh, responses and make um, specific antibodies for specific antigens within the, uh, fl the flu vaccine. Now, <clears throat> this gets a little bit deeper in terms of uh, the um, geometry, the molecular geometry. So an antibody and an antigen fit like lock and key. Um, <clears throat> So this gives you a little bit more of, the, of that perspective, the biochemical and uh, biomolecular perspective. Now, how significant is multiple myeloma? Well, here's the thing. It's uh, lifetime risk for multiple myeloma is 143. So you've got a 1 in 143 chance of getting multiple myeloma. A lot of these are not serious. Uh, this year, an estimated 30,770 adults, 16,000 men and 14,000 women, will be diagnosed with multiple myeloma. 12,770 deaths. Now, let me, let's put that in perspective with adenocarcinoma of the colon, for example. There are 50,000 deaths of adenocarcinoma. Um, over thir each year in the U.S., over 30,000 of those deaths could be prevented if people just screened early, if they did routine screening for colon cancer. How many deaths here with multiple myeloma? About 13,000. So about a third of the preventable deaths, uh, if we screened uh, appropriately for colon cancer, so that helps you understand why I did such a long series on colon cancer screening. Uh, we've got three times the people dying unnecessarily for failure to screen for colon cancer than die um, with all of multiple myeloma each year. So <clears throat> what's the survival rate? Uh, the five-year survival rate, in other words, the number of people that will survive after uh, about five years, including treatment, is about 50%. Now, there's a wide variation. The younger you are, the healthier you are. Um, young people, for example, will get uh, about a 71% uh, five-year survival rate. Uh, after you've had spread to multiple parts of the body, that survival five-year survival rate drops to about 48%. Survival rates have increased significantly over the past decade. Again, they're... Um, impacted significantly by age and overall health. Um, that about wraps it up for the biology of multiple myeloma. I'll be doing one more in this series and it has to do with light chain. Light chain disease is a uh, rare uh, form of kidney disease. It basically <clears throat> happens when these uh, uh, plasma cell lines are beta or, or uh, B cell lines form parts of an antibody and just generate way too much of it. That antibody um, light chain, which we'll show in the next video, uh, 
collects in the kidney and uh, can damage it. Again, that's that one's even rare. This one's not rare. That one's rare, but it's an interesting uh, component of biology. Thank you for your interest.